everybody. It is your favorite Auntie Mo, and I am back. Yes, I am. <laughs> For another episode review of Love and Hip Hop Hollywood. <laughs> this is the season finale. <laughs> and I'm happy, happy than a motherfucker. Because this damn show was getting on my fucking nerves. And I'm so goddamn happy. That it's the last episode of the season. <laughs> yes, I am. This is season six, episode 18, Unbothered. And I am unbothered that this is the last episode of the season. Because, y'all, let's keep it real. This damn season was... <laughs> it just gave me a lot of... <sighs> what is we... <sighs> You know, but hey, this is the last episode of the season. Next up, we have Black Ink Crew Chicago. It's starting tomorrow, and I will have that review for you as well. So, let's not wait anymore. Let's praise baby Jesus, Tom Cruise. This is about third or fourth goddamn airplane that's riding over the place because it knew that I was trying to record, and so it's just trying to drag this thing out like Mona did with this die on season. But we ain't finna do that, y'all. So hopefully y'all are ready for the review because I'm ready to give it to you, so let's get right on up into it. It's starting up where it picked up last time, Brittany B and Lyrica, <laughs> they in the doggone restaurant. You said it was on side. <laughs> well, it is on side. They just back and forth with this old same dumb old bull crap. Then of course as we remember last time, Lyrica comes shaking the table. Of course security come. She starts throwing everything she can. Plates, cups, china. Well she damn near tried to throw black china because her ass was there too as we remember from the last episode. But of course when security got there, that's when Lyrica got big buck. Because if you, well let's, let's keep it real though. Okay, because when Britney B first walked in, like she said to Lyrica, you said it was on side. So Lyrica was like, what do you mean it's on side? Like what are you talking about? So she wasn't trying to do nothing. But oh baby, as soon as security ran up, she got them big old gonads, them nuts. She was ready to be like, so what's up? You don't want to fight? Keep that same energy. I got that energy. Nah, boo-boo, you didn't have the energy at first. Let's go ahead and stop that fake funk. Let's stop that all the way. Because that is not what she was doing when she first walked up to you with that doggone bullshit, right? So Black China is even like, hey, like, calm down. This is not what I bought y'all here for. So security ends up taking Britney B out, right? So Black China is talking to Lyrica. Cause she like, look here, if I can get her to calm down, I want y'all to just talk. That is not what I bought y'all here for. Lyrica's like, that's the same, that's what I thought. That's what I thought we was doing, like, what's up with her? Girl, stop. On site me, on site. That's cold in the streets. If you from the hood, you already know. On site me, on site. That could be anywhere. And shit, ask Scott. Ra Ali got her ass on site. That was at Diddy's New Year's Eve party. She didn't give a damn. On site mean on site. And that's what she said. You know, I've seen it happen to many people. On site mean on site. But we get too far into on site. But what I'm saying is, though, Brittany B kept that energy because that's what she thought she was walking into, right? So Black China is telling Lyrica, calm down. I'm finna go get her. I'm finna let her know what the business is. We ain't finna do all of that, right? So she goes outside, tries to talk to Brittany B. Brittany B, she said it was on site. So I'm waiting for the own side. Black China, like, look here. Calm down. You doing the most. You being real extra right now. Brittany be steady with this goddamn on site bullshit. Black China was me. She was like, look here. Bitch, I'm done. I'm out. I'm finna fucking go. So China ends up leaving. She's like, I, I didn't come here to do all this extra bullshit that you out here doing. I'm trying to make shit right, but you and this bitch sitting up here throwing plates and you on site and try, I'd have been I'd, I'd, I'd have been done with it. I'd have been done with it. China walks away. That was the end of that. Immature. They practicing because, you know, they finna, you know, try this little test run tour thing or whatever, right? I think, I wonder if they low-key probably knew that they was going to be on the tour with Omarion. But Omarion was like, look here, I'm going to cut you in even more if you don't say nothing. Because I got big things that I want to do with the announcements and just don't say nothing. I don't know. Because that's just weird. But then I wanted to... Is Jay Bug still getting his bag because Immature is going to be on this new Millennium 2020 tour? Oh, the one? Oh, if you ain't heard. Oh, baby, I know you heard. If you ain't heard, she been up under somebody's goddamn rock when Omarion released the Millennium 2020 tour without B2K. <laughs> what? <laughs> on Fizzle Pop's birthday? On 
on your birthday, nigga. Oh, that's a happy birthday for your goddamn ass. Mm, mm, mm. But immature is practicing. They sound good. They singing, I will never lie. That's my song. I'm not finna try to keep on singing because I'm sick. I'm just feeling so much better. If y'all like, dang, I tell you, you got a whole lot of energy. That's because I'm feeling a lot better. I still sound a little gentlemanly-ish in the voice box, but I'm feeling better. Chamomile and green tea, bitch. Get you something in the medicine ball. Shout out to my sister out there, Marissa. Starbucks, the medicine ball. You feeling sick? Mm. Go get that in your life. Help knocks all that shit out. So I'm feeling good. I ain't had a good burst of energy like this in a long goddamn time. So y'all finna get all this energy because I ain't had none of it. So... Take it, it's yours. Paris and uh, J Bug there, you know, they dancing. You don't know, just cheer them on or whatever, because like I said, immature is practicing. Baby, next thing you know, Ray J can walk his ass in an hour late, bitch, with a whole entourage. He got an entourage, two dancers, a security guard, a goddamn emotional support pit bull. He got. <laughs> Fire breathers, baton twirlers, drummers. He got all kind of goddamn niggas there with him. He walk in, they like, nigga, what is you? Nigga, what, what is you doing? Ray J excited like a motherfucker. Like he said, he ain't never been on tour before. He ain't never had just the center stage that was just him. You know what I'm saying? Mind you, he only got two hits that I could think of. You know what I'm saying? Y'all correct me if I'm wrong, but the one he had with, um... With look him wait a minute that was my shit wait a minute that was my shit hey wait a minute that song right there and then one wish he had wait he had another song did he wait a minute he had another song hold on sexy cat I sexy cat I just fucked my man up that was my shit too I had to think about it for a minute I know somebody was like auntie mo sexy mom sexy cat sexy cat I caught that I caught that you was right sexy cat I thank you boo Ow, high five bitch thank you I sure appreciate that but them the only three songs that I could think of that Ray J did if it was some other ones drop down below and let me know because it's the only ones that I can goddamn think of that he did but this mofo say he wants to have Rain dro dropping and shit, and he wants pyro text, and he wants shit flying up, and and all kind of shit going on. And they like, hold on, pump your brakes, calm it down a little bit. J Boog and Marcus Houston have to break it down to him and like, look here, nigga, look here. I just need you to know it's levels to this shit. What we on right now is level one. This is what we gonna call a practice concert. You know what I'm saying? We just gonna put together this little venue. You know, see how it work, and if it work out good, then we can get the rain and the pyrotech for the concert, not just for Ray J. You know what I'm saying? Ray J was like, oh, shit. So I'm not finna get the bag back? Like, he thought it was finna, like, <laughs> they going on Summer Jam 2020 next week. No, nigga. No, nigga. This is a practice concert to the concert. For if y'all do a concert, that's what that is. You know what I'm saying? So they had to break his ass down so he could understand what was going on. Two plus two is four. But then you got to get there to carry the one. Oh, okay. Yeah, he got it. Ray J, if you don't sit your goddamn ass down somewhere. So y'all, y'all and Mr. Ray, they meet up with Apple Watch. Because you remember Apple Apple Watch. She didn't show up when she was supposed to meet up with Yo-Yo. Um, what was it? Yo-Yo, um, Tierra Marie. And uh, somebody else, y'all, I forgot. It'll come to me later. But it was on last episode. She was supposed to meet up with them, and she didn't show up. And so, um, you know, this time, Yo-Yo said that she did reach out to her. She said that she'll meet up with him. So her and Mr. Red's talking. They wait for Apple to get there. Yo-Yo say, so you're not going to the immature concert, you know, yourself? You're not going? Mr. Red said, shit, last time I went somewhere around them motherfuckers, I got slapped. I was like, yeah, that probably be your best best of your ass at the house. Now, Apple's whole thing is she don't see why everybody else is tripping about what she does on social media. She feels like it's her social media, it's her platform, and she can do whatever the hell she wants to do with it. Like, Yo-Yo and Mr. Red trying to get her to understand, yes, true, it is your platform. You can do whatever the hell you want to do on it. But at the same time, you have to think about, like, if you really out here spinning out of control like this, every time we see you, you drinking, you turning up, you partying, maybe you need to get some help. Because Mr. Ray, he does, you know, spit some real shit to her. He was like, I don't want to call you that one day and you happen to not call like something actually happens to you but like apple said she been through a lot of shit like you know she said when she was 15 she was into prostitution how you know she she was into a whole 
bunch of other shit. She had to hustle. She had to do what she had to do. She said she was homeless. She was all on her own. She didn't have nobody who was there and who supported her. You know what I'm saying? So, like, she was telling them, if you went through the stuff that I went through in my life, hell, nigga, you would drink, too. But Yo-Yo and Mr. Ray, they both vowed to be there for her, to help her every step of the way, whatever it is that she want to do. And so, I'm hoping that they really are there for her because she really needs some, like, for real, for real. Her, like, Tia Marie was going through her shit. Like, everybody went through that shit. Monice is going through her shit. But... Apple shit, everybody got their own unique shit. Apple shit is some unique shit. So hopefully, you know, they really do give her the love and the support that she does need to, to get the help that she needs. And they not saying that they going to be there just because it's going to be on TV. Because that would be some bullshit. Mm. Big Lyrica and Lil Lyrica meet up with K. Michelle to have dinner, drinks, whatever it is that they goddamn do on VH1 budget. They meet up to talk about, you know, life and whatever the hell is going on. And of course, you know, um, Lyrica tells K. Michelle about the whole situation that happened happened with her and Britney B, how it was supposed to be on site, now this and the other now. K. Michelle agrees with all the rest of us. Their whole situation is dumb and they just need to squash it and, and, and dead it and just goddamn move on and be done with the whole goddamn shit because it's dumb. It don't make no sense. Lyrica also tells K. Michelle that she is thinking about getting her own apartment. Now, K. Michelle breaks it down to her. She was like, look here, are you trying to get an apartment just to prove to him, like, look here, yeah, I can get out and I can do this and uh, it is what it is. Or are you really trying to get out because you're done with the situation and you don't want to be in this marriage anymore? Now, Lyrica does say that she don't, she has abandonment issues, you know, because she never had her dad in her life. And then her twin sister died when she was really young. So it's really only been her and her mother growing up. So because she has such abandonment issues she feels like she has to cling on to the few things that she does have a1 being one of those things child a1 Every, beauty is in the eye of the beholder hell half the people looking at this might think "Ooh, auntie mo look like a Ooh. hey that is your motherfucking right that is your motherfucking prerogative because i damn sure think that a1 is Oh, that's just me and my thoughts, though. That's just me and my taste buds. Don't nobody cuff for me because I ain't sent for you. That's just me and my chamomile tea and, and what we prefer. You know what I'm saying? But, um, you know, her mama tells her that, um, you know, she shouldn't let that stop her from, from you know, seeking her happiness and this, that, and the other. whoop de whoop but child. Lyric and A1, they one couple that get on my damn nerves, and I'm there. They're another reason why I'm happy that the season is ending because I'm tired. Uh, I'm tired of them. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired with they goddamn ass. But um, K. Michelle tells him that once again she is moving. Child. Every love and hip hop K. Michelle on, she just moved there, she finna move somewhere else. She just moved there, and she finna move somewhere else. Then when she just moved there, she finna move somewhere else. Now she's in Hollywood, she finna move back to Atlanta, where it all started from. She said she gotta get back to her southern roots, so she going back to ATL, shawty, that's where she going. So she gonna have another annual I'm moving away to a new life party like she always has. Now look here, I love me some K. Michelle. Bitch, I'll, I'll fight a bitch over K. Michelle. She can, the bitch can't sing, she can sing her ass off. But child, she move. She moves a lot. She moves like she's changing underwear all the damn time. I'm just saying. So we have Moniece doing this intimate concert, right? At this intimate little venue. And so she's on stage and she's singing and Monice can sing. She sung through the song, but I'm going to keep it. I'm going to keep it a buck 50. The end was not good. No. Mm-mm. Mm -mm, that end was not good. But guess who was there? Girl, Booby with his thirsty ass. Child, Booby gets around. <laughs> Baby, Booby is a herpy. Soon as you get rid of his ass, he come right back. <laughs> but no, real shit though. Real spit though. Real spit though. 
So he's there to support Moniz. Now he says that after everything that happened at the skating ring, that him and Moniz got close because he realized that they got a lot in common because she's dealing with her depression and he dealt a lot with his depression when he went through his divorce and when he went through all his injuries when he was in the NBA. And so they connect on that level and they got really, really close. Nigga, what you just at the fashion show checking for Tierra Marie? And then you was just checking for April. Booby. Booby. Booby, booby, booby. Booby. So they sit down, they get to talking. Her cousin shows up. Um, I forgot what she said her cousin's name was. Her cousin Allie, that's what she said her cousin was. Her cousin Allie shows up. She is um, her cousin and she's also a life coach. And so she's been kind of helping her through her depression or whatever. What I really loved about this season is that we were able to see Monique go through her whole thing with mental depression. If you watch me, you know that I have talked about this before. I suffer from, well, I, I don't suffer. Let me take that back. I don't suffer because I ain't suffering from nothing. Hell, I I deal with it every day. And it don't take a hold of me. I take a hold of it. But I deal with bipolar depression. When I'm feeling good, I am good. I, I am great. I can move mountains. I'm telling you, I can do anything. But if there is something, a, a thought of something, like for a long time, I used to deal with kind of seasonal depression. Being that I've lost my mother at, um, uh, in 07 to cancer and it kind of happened all of a sudden when it comes time to being around the holidays it kind of um it, it just puts me in a mood you know what i'm saying thank god i have my son to kind of help pull me out of those moods but before i had my son like it would hit me hard like really really hard just little things you know like that but it was just good to 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 see that and and for that to be Something that people can talk about, something that people don't have to be embarrassed about. Because for the longest, I was embarrassed. Hell, my husband didn't even know. Like, I was going, and then I was going to my doctor and seeing my counselor and, and all that. My husband didn't even know that because I was that embarrassed by myself, you know, about it. So I had to learn, like, look here. This ain't nothing to be ashamed of. This ain't nothing that I should have to hide or nothing. You know, I'm not bragging or boasting about it. Hell, you want to ask me questions, I answer any questions. But, you know, it's, it's a part of life. It is what it is. And it was good to see that on reality TV because that is the, the one part of realness of reality TV. And I applaud Monice for that. I, I bow down to her even more for that. That made me love Monique even more because you were able to see that vulnerability with her. And I, I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. But um, Booby, of course, you know, they sit down and they talk. And Booby is like, so, you know, what's been going on online? Because, of course, you know, after all that shit happened, she went online. She went on Hollywood Unlocked. Like, she went out there and spilled all the chamomile tea, okay? Well, she was like, you know, during that time, what happened at the skating ring, she was off her medication. So, of course, that caused her to, you know, any little trigger. And tr I know, any trigger, it just caused her to just so slowly unravel, like she was saying. And so, she said that it just so happened to be that time that she was supposed to be with her son that week as well. So, she had gotten her son. She wasn't in the right state of mind mentally or emotionally. She said she called Teeny Little Fizzle Pop. He didn't answer the phone. She wanted to call him to see if he could help her possibly get Cameron because she wasn't in the mental state to handle him. Teeny Little Fizzle Pop didn't answer the phone. So she's had to swallow her pride and suck it up, and she had to call April. She said she called April, bawling, crying on the phone to April, like, look here, I need to talk to uh, Drew. Is he around anywhere? She's like, uh, yeah, he's right here. He gets on the phone like, yeah, what's up? She's like, look here, you know, I need some help. I don't know what's wrong right now. Like, can you help me? You know, what can you do? And he's like, I don't know. You need to ask your parents. It hangs up the phone. Like, that's Monice's story. I absolutely believe Monice's story because we see how Fizz is. He, he dismisses her so much. It is so wrong, regardless of what you feel about her. That's the mother of your child. You don't have to be like that with her. You don't have to be, regardless of how she was in the past, how she is now, she's trying to change that. And if you know she's got something mental going on with her, damn, you handle the bitch with delicate gloves. Like, what the hell? Fizz, ooh. T, 
teeny little fizzle pop. Oh, but he got a birthday treat that he will never forget, baby. <laughs> National Omarion Day, baby. I will never forget that shit. That was a smooth criminal right there. <laughs> But anyways, y'all, she said after that happened, like, you know, she hung up the phone. She was crying. Her son could see how upset she was. He went and started crying and was like, why can't I just have a normal mommy? And, you know, th that's got to hurt to hear your baby say that. And your baby don't understand what it is that you're going through. But, you know, he still, you know, hugged her. You know, she acknowledged what he was feeling and was there for him. But, you know, it just... That broke my heart seeing that for Monique. It really did. It broke my heart. I said, feels a pop, you little B-I-H. But, of course, Booby said he gonna be there to pick up the pieces. <laughs> he said, whatever you need, I'm gonna be there for you. You know what I'm saying? Just know I'm here for you. Booby, if y'all gonna set your ass down somewhere. Y'all, this next thing got on my damn nerves. Once again, A1 and Lyrica, they meet up. Baby Ocean is right there. They meet up in the park. Supposedly supposed to talk about what's going on with their whole relationship. They bring again, once again, bring up some old shit. They're arguing about him cheating. He arguing about her cheating. He says she needs to acknowledge his feelings. She say you need to kiss my ass. He say that I ain't gonna do that. She say well, I'm gonna get a divorce and I'm leaving and I got my own apartment. He said, okay, fine, whatever, moving on from that. Y'all, so we at K. Michelle's annual <laughs> New Beginnings party that she has. <laughs> like she always has. She always coming and going, going and coming, coming and going. So they having her little party, and oh, she's um, debuting her song, um, Can You Make It Rain? Ooh, I think it's called Make It Rain. I think that's what it's called. Is it what it's called? Anyways, that damn song, Jam. My favorite song of K. Of K. Michelle's is Can't Raise a Man Still, but... Make It Rain, that song, I think that's probably going to be my new number one song from K. Michelle. That song, Jam. So they there, jamming or whatever. Um, Big Lyrica and Lil Lyrica there. They sitting up there, they talking with K. Michelle. She told K. Michelle she moved out, got her new apartment. Big Mama Lyrica, she happy as hell. She like, yes, tell her about the new apartment that you got. Whoop, doop, 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 doop. She too goddamn happy, too happy. Child, next thing you know... Big Mama Pam come walking through the door. Shout out to Ashley Shaw Miller, baby. If y'all don't watch Ashley Shaw Miller on YouTube, watch her. Her reviews have me fucking rolling. She is one of my favorites on YouTube. Ashley Shaw Miller. Go check her out. Big Mama Pam. That's what she called. <laughs> That's what she called it, girl. Big Mama Pam came up in that child. Shaped like a good old thick ass sack of laundry with that ponytail, baby. I used to rock the shit out that side ponytail like that. She took me back, baby. She took me all the way back with the little bangs right here with the ponytail, and it's coming right down here on the side. So when you turn, it like slap me like like hits you in the face like that, girl. Bye. Fuck you mean on up out of here. I used to rock the hell on up at this shit. But, um, child, she say she, she want to talk to Lyrica because she ain't too happy about the way she been treating my son. And she ain't been treating my son the way a wife supposed to treat a husband. Well, how the fuck is that? And who, is you married to that Nigerian? Are you living by Nigerian rules? And so, that is you. Now... If a wife is supposed to go out and, and be at the house and let her husband go out and cheat and do whatever the hell she eat with girl, no, no, no. I love you, Mama Pam. Love you. And I'm sure you smell like a fresh scent of Tide because she's built like a sack of lime. But what I'm saying is, woman, think about what you say before you say it because no, 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 no. Oh, child, I think I left that part out. Girl... In the beginning, when Lyrica and Britney B was getting into it, this half a Lyrica gonna say about the dumbest thing I think I didn't have heard any woman say in the history of niggadom. This half a gonna say she's just mad because she don't even got a man to cheat on her. Like she's just upset. She ain't got no baby. She ain't got no man. Nobody even look at her. She ain't got no man that would want to cheat on her. 
So soon as Mama Pam come over, big uh, big liquor like, uh, 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 don't you come up in here with that bullshit. We ain't about that shit tonight. She like, no, I just want to talk. Can I please? I just want to talk to liquor real quick. Just, you know, just talk to real quick about what's going on. Please. She said, all right, but I'm going to be an earshot away. I, I, I don't want no shit. So she sits down and she talking with Lyric or whatever, right? Little Lyric talking with Big Mama Pam. She like, okay, so what's up? What's good? She's like, I just want to talk about you and my son. Like, how you think Ocean going to feel? He wake up and don't not there. She's like, well, shit, I tried. Uh, <laughs> you going to have to talk to t <laughs> because he the only one that can tell you what the hell we going to do from here because shit, I don't, I don't goddamn know. She's like, well, I know you think I don't like you, but I sure enough miss you at the house. I miss you. <laughs> Well, she says she supports, you know, Lyrica. She wishes that her and A1 could get together, tough it out, stick it out, all of that. Cha! Big Mama Pam. <laughs> so, y'all, it's the night of the immature concert. Everybody is there, of course. Now, J Book says that he's upset that things aren't working out the way he's hoping it would with B2K, but he is excited that he can still go and chase the bag with immature or whatever, right? So, Ray J is there, Princess is there, <laughs> Prinky. Of course, Prinky says she feels like Ray is up to his old tricks again because he's been doing a lot of shady shit and she's been hearing that he's been up to a lot of shit. Girl, Ray J big ass. <laughs> he getting that thick ass loving it. <laughs> Yo, yo, Brittany B and Mickey Monday, they sitting around, they mingling, they talking about Apple. Across the way is Zell's Paris and um, Miss Nikki Baby and Tierra Maria's over there. Of course, they both cutting eyes at uh, <laughs> uh, Brittany B and Zell's and Paris from across Chai's crazy as hell. Booby ends up walking in with Monice. And so they walking in, and everybody kind of looking at her like, oh, was, you know, is this a new thing? Like, what's going on with this? And, uh, you know, they both said that they're friends. When he said they're the kind of friends that they're not going to lie about what the hell is going on with them. You know what I'm saying? They just chilling right now. They take a thing slow. Because, of course, you know, Tia and Marie, that bitch going to come right out and ask her, so y'all fucking or what? Because you already know, Tia and Marie was kind of feeling booby. And for a second, booby was feeling Tia and Marie. But, hey, you know. Oh, booby, booby, booby. So, of course, they asked Moniz, how's everything been going with the co-parenting between her and Lil Fizzle Pop? She says that there is no communication between neither one of them. That she got her son Cameron a phone, but whenever Cameron is with uh, Fizzle Pop, he takes the phone away so she can't get in contact with him. And then here we go, Booby over there trying to stick up for him and talking about she thinks that, uh, you know, she shouldn't be entitled to figure out what's going on, but she ain't trying to get with him. She trying to do it for the baby. They all like, oh. Oh, booby, okay, I see you, booby. Try to come in. Go to a booby, okay, booby. You know, child booby. <laughs> booby trying to get in where he fit in. He trying to get on the, the seventh season of Love and Hip Hop Hollywood. God damn it. He going to be floating across our goddamn screen somewhere in some episode doing some ting. So, meanwhile, we got Teeny Fizzle Pop in April. They having a little romantical dinner or whatever, right? So, uh, Fizzle Pop gonna say that, uh, he had no interest in going to the immature concert, that, you know, he really don't mess with them, them ain't his people, and Jay Boog obviously is taking his baby mama side, so that's where he wanna be. Nigga, you wasn't invited to the immature concert. Nigga, you ain't get your pre-birthday? <laughs> you wasn't invited, no. A1 comes in. He's backstage talking with Ray J and Prinky. He tells them that Lyrica moved out. And now for a second, Prinky says she feel bad because she was the one that told Lyrica that she needs to move out. And of course, A1 is like, well, why would you tell her to do that? She like, look here. When it came down with me and Ray's situation, I moved out and that made him get his shit together. He missed me more. So, you know, it is what it is. But did y'all peep when Ray asked A1 and he, hold on, time out. A1. You and his goddamn velour suits that you wear. Son, you wore them out. You have worn one in every episode, in every scene, in every color. I can't do no more. I, if you ain't got something else besides velour suits and tuh, don't do it. Don't do it. No, don't do it. No goddamn more. But the child peep, when Ray asked A1, so do you miss her? Like, what's going on? Do you miss her? That fool A1 gonna say, well, it's still fresh or like, you know, 
Like, nah. I was like, damn, nigga. Well, hey, at least we being honest with the whole situation. Oh, shit, it is what it is. So, of course, Ray J is telling him he needs to try to stick it out for his wife and for his family and, and all of this other shit. Child, look here. This just, this just my advice. Y'all need to go ahead and call it quits. You don't trust each other. Y'all keep bringing up old shit. You can't let shit go. So y'all just need to let that go. Give it up. Turn it loose. Let it go. So Ray J performs One Wish. He does really good. He does really, really good. I have to give him that. He still got his voice after all this time. Immature, of course, does Never Lie. Oh. I love that song, and it still sounds, even as grown men, they still get the hell up out that song. And, of course, at the end, they do the recap, what everybody's doing, yada, yada, whoop, whoop, whoop. I don't care. The only person that I really cared about was Apple Watch. She is doing her own lingerie line. Go ahead, girl. You need to hook up with Miss, Mickey, Miss uh, Nikki Baby because she, at one point in time, had her own uh, little lingerie line as well. So, go on, get with her. Y'all do some lingerie together, something like that. But, y'all, that was the end. That was the end of the season for Love & Hip Hop Hollywood. And I am damn sure glad about it. If there was anything that I missed on this episode, y'all already know. Drop it down below and let me know. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Y'all let me know what y'all thought about this season. And Auntie Mo, we'll see y'all in the next video. Peace out. What's up, y'all? Do me a favor and share the video. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think and um, hit that notification button so you will be up to date when I upload my latest videos. Ahala.